Hi listeners, you are welcome to the continuation of our online physics tutorial class. From your favorite student score booster, your online tutorial provider on UTME, WAEC, NECO and NAPTIB exams. Uh, for today's class, we shall be discussing the concept of elasticity. I am Bangbade AA. Now, before we proceed, we need to consider the learning outcomes of this particular presentation, which goes thus. At the end of this presentation, listeners should be able to define elasticity. They should also be able to state Hooke's law. They are also expected to be able to explain the graphical representation of Hooke's law. They should also be able to define and state the formula for tensile strain. They should also be able to define and state the formula for tensile stress. And lastly, they should also be able to state the formula for young modulus of a wire and the energy and work done on a tensile wire or a stress wire. Now, having gone through the learning outcomes, we are now on the first aspect of the presentation, which is on elasticity. Elasticity is the ability of a material to regain its shape after deformation. I repeat, elasticity is the ability of a material to regain its shape after deformation. For example now, a stress string, when you apply a load on a string, it will extend. But after removing the load, if the string is able to regain its shape after removing the load of force, then that means the string possesses elasticity. Now, having understood the concept of elasticity, we are now to discuss Hooke's law, because that is the principle involved in elasticity. Hooke's law st states that the deformation of an elastic material is directly proportional to the applied force, provided the elastic limit is not exceeded provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. I repeat, Hooke's law states that the deformation of an elastic material is directly proportional to the applied force, provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. Mathematically, we have the force F, which is directly proportional to E, which is extension. When we introduce the constant of proportionality, then we have F equals KE. Then we can make K the subject of formula. By dividing both sides by E, then that will give us K equals force in Newton over extension E in meter. In this case, our K is the constant of proportionality whose unit will be newton per meter, our f is the force in newton, y e is the extension in meter. Now, if you have more than one force and one extension, then for the first one, our constant of proportionality k1 will be equal to f1 over e1. And for the second parameters, our constant of proportionality K2 will be equal to F2 over E2. 
Now, if k1 is equal to k2, then we can say f1 over e1 is equal to f2 over e2. Since k is equal to f over e, then the value of k1 is equal will be f1 over e1, and the value of k2 will be f2 over e2. Then if k1 is equal to k2, then we can say f1 over e1 is equal to f2 over e2. Now we have to take note here that our extension will be the new length minus original length. For example, extension 1, which is e1, will be length 1 minus natural length of the wire. And extension 2 will be length 2, that is L2, minus L0, which is the natural length of the wire. is the derivation of the formula for natural length L north. Now, we have to recall that our extension 1, which is E1, is equal to length 1, that is L1, minus natural length L naught. And similarly, our extension 2, which is E2, is equal to new length 2, that is L2 minus natural length L0. And also, we are able to arrive that the constant of proportionality K is equal to F1 over E1, which is also equal to F2 over E2. Now, in this formula, if we substitute for E1 as L1 minus L0 and E2, as L2 minus L0, then we have F1 over L1 minus L0 is equal to F2 over L2 minus L0. Then we can cross multiply. If we cross multiply, we'll get F1 into L2 minus L0 is equal to F2 into L1 minus L0. Then open the brackets to get f1 times l2 that will give us f1 l2 minus f1 times l0 that will give us f1 l0 equals f2 times l0 that will give us f2 f2 times l1 that will give us f2 l1 minus f2 times l0 that will give us f2 l0 then the next step is to collect the line times if you do that by taking those that are having L naught to the right hand side and uh, through that we have F1 L2 then minus F2 L1 now will now be equal to F1 L naught minus F2 L naught. Then the next step is to factorize L naught out. And in doing that, we have F1 L2 minus F2 L1 is equal to F1 minus F2 into L0. Then the next step is to divide both sides by F1 minus F2. And in doing that, we have F1 L2 minus F2 L1 equals F1 minus F2. So this formula is very important for calculation of natural length of a wire. That is L0, natural length L0 equals F1 L2 minus F2 L1 over F1 minus F2. So we have to take note of this as we may need it later in our calculation aspects. Now, the next thing to discuss is the graphical representation of Hooke's law. Uh, which can be got by plotting the force in Newton against extension E in meter. And in that, we have the curve as shown above. And we have about uh, four different points, A, B, C, and D. Now, the region from the center, I mean the origin of the curve, 
to A represent the region that obeys Hooke's law, while the other regions, such as B, C, and D, do not obey Hooke's law. Now, the point A here represents the elastic limits. The point B represents the yield of plastic points. The C represents the maximum load and D represents the fracture points. So, just as we said, the elastic limit is the load at which the elastic material can regain its shape and is the region within which whose law can be obeyed. Beyond the elastic limits, the material will no more obey Hooke's law. Now, having taken ourselves through the graphical representation of Hooke's law, the next thing is to consider the definition of terms in Hooke's law. And the first we shall be discussing is the elastic limit. Elastic limit is the load above which the material no longer regain its original shape and dimension upon removal of the load. And it also shows the point within which uh, the Hooke's law is obeyed. Beyond elastic limits, Hooke's law will no more be obeyed by the elastic material. The next point we shall be talking about represent the yield points. The yield point or plastic point is the load at which the material begins to show a substantial derivation from Hooke's law. So it's no more it will no more obey Hooke's law. That is the beginning of plastic deformation of the material. Then the next one is the maximum load, which is the load is the load which the material can support and beyond which the material will break. So beyond the maximum load, the material will break. That is the maximum load which the material can support. And the last is the fracture or breaking point, which is the load at which material breaks into two. It is the load at which the material breaks into two. Or we we'll say the point at which the material breaks into two. Now, having taken ourselves through the necessary terms, terms in uh, Hooke's law, or the graphical representation of Hooke's law, the next term we shall be considering is the concept of stress. Stress is defined as a force acting on a unit cross-sectional area. Mathematically, tensile stress equals the tensile force F over cross-sectional area A. Its unit is Newton per meter square. I mean the unit of tensile stress is Newton per meter square. Now, having understood the concept of stress, the next thing we shall be discussing is the concept of tensile strain and Young modulus. Tensile strain is the ratio of the extension E to the original length L naught. Mathematically, tensile strain equals extension E over original length. Since both extension and original length are in meter, it will cut it meter will cut meter, so it has no unit. Then the next concept we shall be considering is the concept of young modulus of elasticity. By young modulus, we mean the ratio of tensile stress to tensile strain within the elastic region. Mathematically, young modulus y equals tensile stress over tensile strain. Or, alternatively, 
we can say the young modulus is equal to the product of force and natural length over area the over the product of area and extension of course this is got from the formula of stretch which is uh, force over area then divided by formula of strain which is extension over original length so if we adjust that we are going to get fl over ae now the unit of your modulus is also newton per meter square Now the next thing we shall be considering is the concept of work done and energy on a stress wire. Work done equals average force times extension. Or we can say our work done is equal to half Fe. That is the mathematical expression. Work done equals half Fe. F in this case is the force in Newton. And E is the extension in meter since f equals ke then if we substitute for f equals ke in half f e that will give us half instead of f now you have ke then times e and that will lead us to work done equals half ke square k in this case is the first constant y is the extension in meter and lastly we have we also have elastic potential energy which can also be expressed as half ke square now in summary of what we've done so far we are able to define elasticity as the ability of a material to regain its shape after the formation then we proceeded to Hooke's law where we said Hooke's law said that the for the deformation of an elastic material is directly proportional to the applied force provided the elastic limit is not exceeded then from Hooke's law we are able to get the formula for the uh, force constant which is k equals f over e then from there we are able to get the equation connecting two different forces and its extension together as k equals f1 over e1 which is also equal to f2 over e2 then we are also able to derive the expression for the original length of a wire after that we proceeded to tensile strain whose formula is a uh, extension over original length we also consider the tensile stress whose formula is a force over area from there we proceed to the work done and energy where we bring two separate formula the first of which is a work done equals half f e and the second is a half k e square so you can calculate our work done using half f e or half k e square also we talk about the elastic potential energy whose formula is also half k e square so all these formula are very important for us to take note as we can need them later in our calculation aspect now our next video will be on the calculation aspect of Hooke's law with sample questions and solution from UTME. I urge you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share our videos as we promise to be giving you more presentation, I mean the lectures on subjects relating to UTME. Thank you.